Hello, boys and girls. It's Father Chris, and it's a great joy to join you for the Children's Liturgy of the Word. And as always, you know I like to begin with a song. So I think you know this one. Sing with me. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Remember in the response and with your spirit, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Boys and girls, as always, we begin by acknowledging our sins, the times that we have hurt God, hurt others, and maybe even hurt ourselves. So I invite you to close your eyes and think about the times that maybe you told lies, you didn't pray, you weren't thankful, you weren't uh, generous, maybe times you were selfish or had a bad attitude, and let's ask Jesus to forgive us. Lord Jesus, you came to save us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came us to show us the way. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you pray for us always. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let the church say, Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, hear us and all of our prayers today. Help us receive your word and hold on to you the way that Jesus did until the day we stand with you in heaven. For you are God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the Acts of the Apostles. That might sound familiar because we've been hearing from the Acts of the Apostles every Sunday since Easter. And that book tells us about the actions of the Apostles in those days after Jesus rose from the dead and went back to the Father in heaven. So listen now to these words. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the followers, but they were afraid of him because they did not believe that he was a true follower. That's because before he became a true follower, he was actually killing some of the Christians. So they were right to be afraid. Then Barnabas helped him by taking him to the apostles. He explained how on the road to Damascus, Saul had seen the Lord and how the Lord had spoken to Saul. Barnabas also said that when Saul was in Damascus, he had spoken bravely in the name of Jesus. Saul moved about freely with the followers in Jerusalem and told everyone about the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response today is, I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. Say that with me. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. Everyone on this earth will remember you, Lord. People all over the world will turn and worship you. Together, I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. In the future, everyone will worship and learn about you, our Lord. People not yet born will be told, the Lord has saved us. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord, and we make the cross on our forehead, on our lips, and on our hearts. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, my father is the gardener. He cuts away every branch of mine that does not produce fruit, but he trims clean every branch that does produce fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already clean because of what I said to you. Stay joined to me and I will stay joined to you. Just as a branch cannot produce fruit unless it stays joined to the vine, you cannot produce fruit unless you stay joined to me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you stay joined to me and I stay joined to you, then you will produce lots of fruit, but you cannot do anything without me. Stay joined to me. Let my teachings become part of you. Then you can pray for whatever you want and your prayer will be answered. When you become fruitful disciples of mine, my Father will be honored. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we're filming this in my office in the rectory next to the church. And some of you have visited me here or your moms and dads have brought you through. And so you're all welcome to come in and, and check it out at some point. And one of the things I have here, not far from my desk, is this beautiful plant that Ms. Rashara gave me, right? And I got this plant when I was sick back uh, in September two years ago. And some of you remember I was down in the hospital in New Orleans for a week and when I came home, this beautiful plant was here. Now it was smaller, right? It was smaller, but I've continued to take care of it, just like your moms and dads and maybe you or grandmom take care of plants in your house, right? I love the plant. And so one of the things I have to do, right? I have to give it water, right? If I didn't give it water, it wouldn't look like this at all, right? It would, it would kind of turn brown and the plants, the leaves would start dying, right? And the other thing I have to do sometimes is what Jesus talks about in the gospel. I have to prune it, right? Because sometimes there's leaves on here. As a matter of fact, there's one right back here. So it's kind of dying. And so I have to pull these off and I have to throw them in the trash. I'll throw that one in the trash later, right? And, and, and it keeps the plant alive and beautiful. But the most important thing is I can't break off pieces from the plant. Right? If I take this plant right here, and I'm going to do this, I don't normally do this, but just to teach you guys a lesson. If I take off this part of the plant, what do you think is going to happen with this part? If I put it on my desk, is it going to stay alive? What do you think? No, why not? Because it's separated from the roots that are down under the dirt, and there's no way it's going to get water. Now, I could stick this part in water and maybe some roots will come, maybe, right? But the plant has to stay connected to the vine. And in time of Jesus, the, the boys and girls who were hearing him talk, they knew about this because lots of their moms and dads were farmers. And so they were listening to this kind of stuff all the time. And they helped on the farm. And so they knew when Jesus said, you can't separate the vine from, from the branches. But really what he was talking about was not plants, but our relationship with him. Boys and girls, the reason we come to church each week, the reason you take this time even while you're at home to, to watch these videos and to pray and to reflect with us is because we need to stay connected to Jesus. I know sometimes you'd be rather watching something else on YouTube. And maybe some of you even click over when your moms and dads aren't watching. But we need to stay connected to Jesus. That's why we sing. That's why we listen to his word. That's why we praise him. Because if we're going to have the best life, and you want to have the best life, then you need to stay connected with Jesus. Because otherwise, you won't look nice and pretty like this. you end up looking yucky like this. No one wants this. We all want this. So stay close to Jesus. Boys and girls, just like the grown-ups in church, we now make our profession of faith and your response will be, yes, I do believe. Do you believe in God who is our Father, who helps you grow as his disciple and is always your loving creator? Yes, I do believe. 
Do you believe that your life through Jesus Christ, God's only son, will get better and better? Yes, I do believe. Do you believe that Jesus shares with you the gift of his Holy Spirit? Yes, I do believe. And boys and girls, as, as branches on the vine of Jesus, we turn now and we offer our prayer. We pray for you and for your family that you always know God's love for you and God's wonderful plan. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for you and your classmates and your teacher at school. Lord God, bless each of our young people's classes that they may continue to learn even in these difficult times and be kind and loving towards each other. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for these beautiful days of weather and the chance to play outside. And we pray that when we do, we are generous, we forgive those who hurt us, and we're always willing to listen to our dads and moms. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick, those who are sick with COVID, those who are struggling in any way, for our relatives and the elders of our church who are sick, Lord, bring them healing and peace always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pause for a moment of quiet for you to think of people that you know who need the help of God today or something in your life that you need prayer for. We join all of our prayers together and we pray the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So please have mom or dad or some other grown up in the house uh, download this activity sheet, which is there on the website. And, and there's this wonderful activity on the back where you can color with the vine and the branches, a, a way that you connect to Jesus. So maybe it's you watching your tablet. Maybe it's you praying on your knees before you go to bed at night. Maybe it's you praying the rosary in this month, all right? So you download that and do that with one of the grown-ups in your house. Two reminders, boys and girls. This month, we're going to be praying the rosary uh, together. So have mom and dad join us on Sunday nights at 7 o'clock before you go to bed. And there's other YouTube links that you can find and just pray at another time. If, if 7 o'clock at night on Sundays isn't good, but at some point this week with your family, pray the rosary together. Our mother in heaven will love that. And second, as we talk about our mother in heaven, next Sunday, the 9th of May, is Mother's Day. So but plan something for your mom. Make her a card, draw her a picture, maybe put some of your money together and have some other grown-up take you out shopping. Your moms do a lot for you. This has been a tough year, right? And so even if it's the only gift you can give her is you can clean your room or you cannot complain or not fight with your sister or brother, that's the gift mommy really likes. So remember, plan now, do something for mommy. Have a great week.